Well, one of the ways in which people differ that's very obvious is by how they look. Their outward features, particularly their faces. And anyone who's ever met, and most people have, pairs of identical twins will know just how difficult it is to see the difference between them. And since the main characteristic of identical twins is basically they share their complete genetic makeup, that immediately tells you that the face is very largely genetically determined. And it's been important in evolution to recognize the face and to recognize probably membership of a group. Uh, so one of, that's one of the most variable things between people. And so our next phase of our study is to try and understand what are the genetic factors behind facial differences. We know a certain amount about hair color. Uh, we know a certain amount about um, eye color and what determines it. It's not much different in human animals than in other animals. But in order to study the face, what we're doing is we're going back to people whom we've already got DNA from and a lot of genetic information, and we're taking three-dimensional pictures, a complete image of their face, so we get a digital version of that that we can completely reconstruct how they look and make very fine measurements of differences in facial features. And that's where we're at at the, at the moment. We've done about eight or 900 photos like that. They require a lot of analysis. And then what we're going to look for is to look for genetic differences that are like the disease studies that go along with particular facial features. And in this way, we hope we can identify the genetic variations that determine the face, which we think will be really an interesting thing to do. And it's part of studying the genetics of normal differences, taste differences, smell differences, uh, more complicated are behavioral differences and the way we move and their facial expression. And that's for the next phase after we've solved the face. Uh, the, the genetic factors that are involved in diseases are of a wide variety of different types depending on the type of disease, whether it's cancer, heart disease or diabetes. There are some severe abnormalities that give you facial distortion. Many people know what Down syndrome is. It used to be called mongolism for an obvious reason because of the facial features. But by and large, that's a, a minority of telling you anything about disease. But more interesting, of course, is the whole question of, of facial identification and recognition from a DNA sample. So uh, this obviously has forensic implications. Are we ever going to be able to take some DNA and say, actually, this is what that person looks like? Now, I think that may become possible, at least to a fair extent. So I think those are the, the applications there will be some applications that relate to diseases with obvious facial abnormalities, but we're really doing it for the intrinsic interest. It's an extremely interesting form of variation, just like taste variation, olfactory receptors, which really determine fine taste difference, are hugely variable. Uh, and we think that sort of knowledge about what controls similar variability in other features is of great interest.